Okay, I thought I'd uh, share with you guys my color workflow. Um, and uh, as you can see here, the the images, I've got a bunch of images here from uh, actually taken uh, uh, the first day that I came out here, uh, the day before we started shooting uh, for the webinar. Uh, and um, yeah, I've got a little bit of clouds in the sky and you can see I've you know I'm not really bracketing the exposures because I know if I if I place my cursor right on the highlight side you can see it's just under 90 uh, which is exactly where I want my highlight and uh, so this has been um, exposed the way I want it and now I'm gonna just uh, see how to bring it in uh, best I can into into Photoshop where I'm really gonna finish this uh, so my strategy really is not to do too much uh, in um, in the raw processor, but if I, I'm feeling that this is too cold a rendering. So uh, you know I'm going to take some creative license here. This was coming at sunset, so it really should be uh, warmer. So I'm going to warm it up a little bit here, uh, and maybe add add just a touch of magenta in there. I'm just trying to get uh, get it to the sense of uh, the sunset light that 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 I remember at the scene. So you know, it's a landscape; it can be almost anything. I don't want it. I don't want the clouds to get too pink. So I'm just kind of cruising over here with the cursor uh, and and seeing that they're just a little bit on the um, on the blue side, which is fine. And I'm a little warm here on my. Uh, on my highlight which makes sense to me uh, I could maybe be just a little bit warmer um, you know I definitely want this to look a little bit like late afternoon sunset light okay now um, I think my my strategy here is to maybe just knock the exposure down just a little get a little bit richer looking uh, I don't want to lose too much shadow so I'm going to open up in, in the shadows just a little bit uh, you know I'm just just a nudge you know like like half a stop kind of you know uh, uh, I get a nicer sort of separation of the highlight to the white of the lighthouse now the other thing I'm noticing uh, is I've got a little perspective convergence uh, because I, my camera angle is very low so I'm gonna correct for that I'm gonna go into the lens corrections here and uh, we're gonna go we'll go ahead and remove chromatic aberration now the lens corrections that I do want to use though are to per correct for the vertical perspective so I, I've got my uh, uh, my I'm in lens corrections in the manual uh, panel here and I'm gonna change the vertical perspective just a little bit I'm gonna just kind of nudge it a little bit until that lighthouse looks a little more straight up and down and you can see here that I'm coming in on the bottom so I want to constrain the crop uh, and I, I think that's doing exactly what I want it to do. Okay, uh, maybe go back up here to basic and maybe just a just a touch of extra saturation. Uh, I don't want to go too far. I uh, see I'm, I'm getting I'm pulling out some more color in here. The sky is getting a little a little more colorful, but really. Uh, I tend to be very conservative here very very conservative so you know maybe just a little bit I don't want to push it too far um, and uh, okay so now I'm gonna edit this in Photoshop so I go in here photo edit in and I'm going to go ahead and open it as a smart object only because I don't want to save another version of this file at this point I don't want to create a new one uh, at this point. I want to wait until I've done all my edits, um, and then I'm going to place it in a, a work in progress folder. So I'm going to open up as a smart object, not because I, I necessarily want to do anything um, in Photoshop with that smart object, but because I want to delay the edit, uh, the saving. So here we are in Photoshop, smart object. I'm going to go ahead and flatten it. I actually don't need to use the smart object. What I'm more concerned with now is looking at the channel structure. So uh, I'm thinking in terms of, uh, I always think of a color image in terms of black and white. And what we have is a red channel, a green channel, and a blue channel. Um, and you know, you'll notice the red channel really seems to have the best contrast overall. 
this is almost always the case in landscapes but look how it, it, it changes the way the rocks look uh, the, there's more contrast in the sky uh, everything about the red channel is better so what I'm gonna do is make uh, a channel mixer adjustment and uh, so I'll go over here to, to the, my adjustment panel and select channel mixer and I'm gonna say make a black and white red filter this gives me 100 percent of the red channel and you notice that now it looks it's a black and white and it has that uh, kind of increased contrast uh, now here's the first trick I'm gonna take my blending mode from normal and I'm gonna say luminosity okay so we've got the sky is a little darker the rocks are a little lighter uh, and the blue the blue oceans a little darker uh, you know sort of nicer contrast overall but it's doing two things at once it's it's lightening the warm elements and it's darkening the cool elements now let me just let me just go back and see if there's anything any other part of the image that I, I like better in one of the other channels so I, I know what the red channel looks like the green channel is a little bit darker rocks the blue channel has the darkest rocks uh, at least in the foreground okay so maybe I will uh, I'll do something uh, I want to maybe darken this rock so I want to keep the rocks kind of in this the, the lightning effect in the center so um, now I'm going to do another trick here uh, we'll make another channel mixer okay now this channel mixer if I uh, if I go ahead and say black and white um, with the um, uh, with the blue filter I'm gonna get uh, you know a version of these rocks that have already been lightened because the, the previous channel mixer is lightening those rocks I'd actually like these rocks to be even darker so I'm gonna use a little, another little trick to reach down to the original background layer to pull up essentially the blue channel from the original black background layer which is going to have darker blue uh, darker rocks so I'm going to go down here to blending options and uh, let's just see if we can see this in effect so my knockout here is none I'm going to go down to deep and you notice how everything got a little darker that's because when we knock out deep we're going down to the background to pull up the channel from the background up in here to into this layer and then uh, I'll change my blend mode uh, to um, luminosity and notice how dark these rocks got um, okay so I actually mostly like it in this rock so uh, I'm gonna and possibly down around in here you know it puts a, makes those makes these a little darker so, but I don't like it everywhere else uh, we're going to use it in the foreground rocks but I don't want to use it everywhere so I'm going to invert this layer mask and that's now black just did a command I to invert that and now I'm going to take uh, and uh, let's let's just start painting in the darker rock a little redder rock um, maybe maybe using a, a opacity of 30 percent I'll bring it in gradually you know I just want to darken that area just a little bit and uh, I'm going to darken these rocks I'll go back there okay it's a very subtle kind of thing I want to I want to keep everything pushing towards that 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 white lighthouse okay all right now um, I'm gonna do another little trick here we're gonna duplicate this image I'm gonna duplicate the merged layers so now I have two copies and they're both the same only this one this copy I'm gonna change the mode from uh, RGB to LAB okay LAB and why am I doing that I'm doing that because now the channels are different we have an A channel we have a B channel you notice how the the B channel is there these A and B channels are very strange looking because they're really 
uh, the the lightness values have to do with color rather than uh, contrast all the contrast and tone is in the L channel okay so there's some interesting things that are going to happen when when we play around with those so right now um, uh, I'm in LAB I'm gonna do a crazy kind of curve here to really uh, juice up um, the uh, the saturation I'm not I don't I'm not looking for extra color but I'm looking for uh, the change in the channels that's gonna occur so uh, I'm gonna especially the B channel let's let's really uh, con we're gonna contrast up the B channel which is gonna increase the the saturation of the blue sky I mean it's almost like ridiculously saturated right and um, now let's check out the what that that B channel looks like because I've increased the contrast in the B channel so I'm really putting a lot of contrast into the sky and uh, the areas that are more yellow than they are blue are brighter the areas that are more blue than they are yellow are darker and the areas that have no color are medium gray so let's let's see what I'm gonna do with that okay so here's I'm back at my original uh, and I'd kinda like the sky to be you know a little darker uh, than it already is. I mean it, it did get a bit darker with that red channel move but let's make it even darker so I'm gonna put a empty layer up there and then we're gonna use another kind of trick advanced feature here image apply image and I'm gonna go to my copy and I'm gonna get that B channel okay so I put my B channel in there and now if I place this odd looking B channel in overlay mode what happens to that sky it's also really lightening every, all the uh, all of the warmer elements here but I don't have to have it do that okay I can use blending options to blend that out blend out that um, uh, that that move so I'm only going to use the darkening parts of this layer so I'm going to my blending options and I'm gonna take out everything that's lighter than 128 by using this little move here so this layer is the B channel overlay layer and in that overlay calculation everything darker than 128 will darken the underlying image and anything lighter than 128 would would normally lighten the underlying image but by moving this slider over to that point that midpoint 128 I'm blending through everything that's lighter than 128 in this B channel layer so let me just label that B channel so we don't lose track of that okay so you can kinda see uh, it's also darkening that that little bit of blue there I kinda like that blue being a little bit lighter so I'm going to mask it out. So I just get a, a brush with black paint. I've got a layer mask there. I'll leave that, that blue thing a little brighter. Just another little something kind of interesting in, in the composition. Okay. So uh, we've, we've done something pretty trick here without without doing any uh, any retouching or masking or anything like that. You know, perhaps now... Uh, I'll go back to my LAB copy and um, so this is like ludicrously uh, saturated so let's go back to something you know a little more normal and perhaps a, a little bit more saturated let's let's just go for a little more saturation so I'm making the B channel steeper and that in, enhances the 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 blue the blue and the uh, yellow saturation and you know maybe we'll maybe we'll add uh, just a tad of saturation boost in the in the B channel as well so we've got just a little more saturation it's a little more colorful especially in the sky and I'll 
go ahead and flatten that and we'll drag this on top of the RGB document and Photoshop is very clever it'll actually do the mode change and I'm holding down the shift key dragging with the move tool up to the other tab it comes forward and I drop this on top and now I'm going to just place this in color mode so I, I, I'm getting a little more enhanced color uh, that's too much it's a little a little still a little too colorful so um, and just a little more color in the sky I like it a little bit better and uh, we'll call that finished. That was a, a little trick and I went through it really quickly. Uh, if you want to see more of this kind of stuff I'm going to go through uh, some little more detailed video tutorials and uh, we'll have the links here. Uh, I'll have them uh, up on uh, uh, YouTube uh, for your viewing pleasure. So uh, have a great one. Thank you for watching and I'll see you uh, next time.